In this tutorial, we're going to draw a room in one point perspective. So you're going to start with a square or a rectangle. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect the edges and lightly draw an X. So going from corner to corner with our ruler, we're going to draw an X. We will need to erase this, so make sure it's very light. And we're going to extend those lines out. And these are actually going to make up the walls and the ceiling and the floor of our room. We'll put a vanishing point right in the center. And so there's the ceiling, walls, and the floor. So that square is our back wall of our room. What we're going to do first is start with a door. So we're going to draw two vertical lines, so going straight up and down. Resist the urge to tilt. You want to keep going straight up and down. So they're parallel to each other and they're vertical. To make the top of the door, it's going to be a converging line. You don't need to draw it all the way to the vanishing point. If you want to make it look like there's some thickness to the door, we can draw a parallel line to the side of that with a horizontal line to show the edge. And then we can erase part of the line of the floor there to make it look like it's going into another room. So I'll just draw the back wall of the other room back there to give you an idea of what to look for. Next, we'll make some windows. So we're going to draw two converging lines. I'm drawing them lightly because I will need to erase them. So that will be the top and the bottom of your window. Then we need to make vertical lines to be the sides of them. Remember, they're going straight up and down. They are not tilting. So I'm making two windows here. And then I can darken up my lines just a little bit on the places where I want them. It's always a lot easier to erase a line or make it darker than it is to draw it really dark and then try to get rid of it. So draw it light until you get it right. We'll erase those extra converging lines there. And I think I'm going to make just a little bit of a border around these windows to give them a little pizzazz. You can also get rid of the X inside of that back wall at this point, but please leave the vanishing point. You'll still need that for a whole bunch of stuff. So we'll come back to the border around the windows. So we're going to make two more converging lines above and below our windows. And then we'll do some vertical lines to show the sides of them. So you may notice that objects generally get smaller as they're farther away and they get larger as they're closer. So I'm going to give a little more room on the edges of the closer window than I am along the edges of the window that is farther away from us. Next, what we're going to do is make some tile flooring. So what I'm going to do is right along this edge where the wall meets the floor is I'm going to make little marks every quarter of an inch. It can be any measurement for you, it's up to you, but a quarter of an inch is good for right here. So just little marks, and then I'm going to connect the vanishing point to each of those marks. But instead of drawing on the wall, I'm going to draw on the floor. So don't draw on the wall because you'll just have to erase it anyway. And you're going to connect those to create your floorboards. So 
So by measuring out those ticks, we're making sure that each of these floorboards is an equal width. So we don't want to have a whole bunch of like really wide ones and then really thin ones because that looks pretty funny most of the time. So we could leave it at this if we wanted just like a wood floor or if we wanted to make a tile floor what we would do is take our ruler and then we would actually line it up from the corner of the wall where that back wall meets the the floor and then we would line it up with the front of the wall on the opposite side. So we're going to make like a diagonal line. And what I'm actually going to do is just make little tick marks where my ruler intersects with each of those converging lines. So you'll see there's kind of little diagonal tick marks there. And then I can line up my ruler with each of those tick marks and draw a line that is parallel to the back of the wall. Now why do I do that and not just randomly draw lines? Well, when I make that diagonal line, what happens is when I draw these parallel lines right now, they start to slowly get farther and farther apart. And that makes it look like the tiles are getting larger, which means that they're closer to us. So I'm actually going to go ahead and continue those lines in the inside of that other room. Probably would have been easier to do this right away at the beginning, but you know, sometimes we think of things in hindsight. So as you can see, those tiles have gotten larger and larger as they get closer to us. If you want, you can make them checkered later on. I'm just going to reposition the floor here so it's the same as this current room. And then I'm going to add in some extra converging lines in the back so that we can continue that checkered pattern. So we're just staying inside the door frame. But it still needs to be lined up with the vanishing point. So there's a basic room. Now I'm just going to start adding in some little details as we go along. I think this room needs some furniture. So I think I'm going to draw a little table here. So what I'm going to start with is just a little rectangle for the side of the table. Then to make the top of the table, I'm going to draw some converging lines from the top corners. Then I'll draw a parallel line from that edge of the rectangle. So there's the top of our table right there. And our table needs some legs. So obviously our front legs of the table are going to be closer to us. So they're going to come down just a little bit farther onto the floor than the back legs. We'll still see the back legs. They're going to be on the inside of the table. Imagine them lining up with those corners of the table. We could even shade them in to make them seem more like they're underneath the table. And I think I'm going to draw a vase of flowers here. I gotta decorate this place just a little bit, make it look a little nicer.
Oh, much better. <laughs> I think we'll add a couple picture frames here. These don't need to be in perspective because they're on the back wall. Nice family photo there. Next up, what I'm going to do is draw a couch or a bed. Maybe it's a day bed. <laughs> so I'm going to start with just a horizontal line and I'm going to connect each of those edges with a converging line. That's going to make the sides of it. I'll erase this stuff on the inside just to be a little less confusing. And the front of this is going to be just a rectangle, not in perspective, just a plain old rectangle, just like the table front. But at this bottom edge, it will be a converging line. And then it's going to be vertical, just like our windows. The back will be parallel to the front. I'll erase the insides here. So now we have a floating bed. I think it still needs a few things. We'll give it some legs. So when I draw this back leg, I notice that it needs to be a bit longer to actually touch the floor. So I need to make the other side in equal length. We'll make a much smaller one in the back because it's farther away. And we'll color them in because they're underneath, so they'll be in shadow. And what I'm going to do now is make the back of the couch or bed. So we'll do a converging line to be the top of it. I think I'm going to make some puffy kind of pillow sort of backs here. We'll make them a little curved. I think I'll make some armrests too. So we'll be parallel on the top of it. Then I'm going to make a curved edge, but that side of it actually needs to be a converging line right there. So we'll clean that up just a little bit. We'll erase the inside. And we'll do the same thing on the back. So once this is all cleaned up, we have a really basic room. You can keep adding things as you go along, but thanks for watching.